Hello, everyone, and thanks for tuning in to Poets and Quants' online MBA panel with University of Florida's Warrington College of Business. I'm your host, Christy Bleizeffer, with Poets and Quants, and please feel free to use the Q&A function to submit any questions you might have, and I'll do my best to get to those at the end of the session. I want to welcome both of our guests today. Thank you for your time. And so let's just start by getting to know one another. If you'll both just take a minute to, to introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit more. Uh, Naz, let's start with you. Perfect. Uh, hi, everybody. And as you could tell, my calendar says it's ready to do this Poets and Quant session. So I'm super excited uh, to be here. Thank you, Christy, for having us. And of course, our friends at Poets and Quants. Um, it's absolutely an honor to, to be included in this spotlight. Um, I'm Naz Aranguch. I'm the Director of Admissions for the UF MBA program. And I've been with the program for about 13 years at this point. And I oversee our online um, executive, weekend professional, and full-time MBA programs. So super excited to be here and share more about what we have to offer and specifically highlight our online MBA format. Yes, thank you very much. And Isabel. Hi, hi everybody. My name is Isabel or Izzy Atkins. I'm a student in the two-year online MBA program at University of Florida. Uh, professionally, I'm a contracts and procurement manager for one of the world's largest methanol manufacturers out here in Baton Rouge. Very good. Thank you for joining us. And uh, Naz, let's just start by getting to know a little bit more about the uh, Warrington Online MBA, um, how long it's been around, how long it, gener it generally takes, that kind of thing. Yeah, perfect. So, you know, um, here at the Warrington College of Business, we've been offering our online MBA program since 1999. Uh, we were a pioneer program in launching and establishing an online uh, program back in 1999. Um, we used to mail VHS tapes. So Izzy, I don't even know if you have a VHS tape today. Um, I know I don't, but, you know, that used to be the, the modality of which we would uh, get lectures to our students. Of course, today uh, we've evolved drastically since then. Um, and what we offer as our online program is an asynchronous format where students basically just come to Gainesville, Florida, um, the sunny sunshine state of, uh, you know, here in Gainesville in the swamp, they come to Gainesville for orientation at the beginning of the program. And that's the only time in which they need to be kind of synchronous with their classmates, then everything else is done asynchronously and virtually. So um, it is designed to, to help those who need heightened level of flexibility, who also are looking to pursue their graduate business degree. And so for us, you know, when we launched our, our program, um, we were thinking of that busy working professional in mind, that individual that might only be able to, you know, spend 15 to 20 hours a week towards their MBA studies. And so the curriculum, the delivery, Delivery, all of that um, was with that very busy professional in mind. And in fact, um, when you think about our online program, we even streamlined it in such a way that, that we are cohort based. So Izzy has probably, I'm trying to remember how many were specifically in your cohort, probably about 60, 65 students. And they kind of all work together from start to finish. And in, in addition to having just her cohort, um, at any given time, we have multiple online MBA uh, programs running because, in fact, we offer a one-year and a two-year program. Our two-year program, online program, is designed for any undergraduate major, um, whereas our one-year program is designed for those who specifically have a business degree within the last seven years. So, so Izzy's program is 48 credit hours. Our two-year program is 48 credit hours um, and two years, 24 months to complete, whereas our one-year accelerated option for those who already have completed the business core is about a year long, uh, just under 15 months, and um, you know, is 32 credit hours. But the great aspect of our online program, and for those who are listening, is that we are offer this online program fall, spring, and summer. So virtually every, you know, five or so months, uh, five, six months, we are bringing in a new crop of students, which actually I think really uh, boils down to the fact that we have such a phenomenal and large alumni base. So that's a little bit and a lot of it. So I'll, I'll let Izzy chime in now. <laughs> well, that is a great overview. But if you could just while you're here, uh, out of all that, what would you say is the key differenti differentiator? Yeah, so I would say our key differentiator, um, you know, beyond being able to uh, have, you know, an asynchronous flexible format is really actually the opportunity to 
fine tune and, and, and create um, a curated MBA experience um, that, it, you know, fits, fits whatever needs a student wants. You know, if you're looking for a career change, well, you have a designated career coach. If you're looking for professional development, you have that opportunity to come to one of our um, trainings, uh, certifications in Lean Six Sigma or Excel or, you know, um, learn more about Python. So, so we have a great ability to offer a flexible format, but in conjunction of offering that flexibility, we also offer global immersion experiences. We offer, you know, tons of, uh, you know, like on the side experiential learning opportunities to really allow students the, the ability to engage in a way that is meaningful and impactful for their busy lives. Yeah, yeah, great overview, thank you. Izzy, let's talk a little bit about what led you to consider getting an MBA and what was it about the Warrington Online MBA that, that kind of attracted your attention? Yeah, well, I've always wanted to do an MBA um, I don't know that I ever found the right time until I realized there's probably no no right time. You just kind of dive in and do it. But when I was looking for a program, I was looking for one that was very flexible. I mean, I'm a full time professional, as I think many people are when they're when they're approaching a master's program. And I work full time and even often over time. So finding a program that fits that schedule, one that's flexible, that it can work around me. Um, was something that was key, and this particular program that I'm in absolutely fits fits that. The other thing that I was looking for in particular was I was looking for a wor world class program, one that would challenge me, but one that also for the for the money was the best value. And um, University of Florida checked all those boxes for me, so it's uh, one of the best decisions I've ever made. Ah, oh, very good. Well, do you mind telling us a little bit more about your learning experience so far? Yeah, absolutely. So um, at any given time, I've been taking uh, two classes uh, at the same time. And um, over the two years, I'm about to graduate in December. So I've come a long way, but still have a, a few more classes to go. Um, and each one of those classes, like Naz mentioned, really offers this mix of individual assignments, but also the opportunity to really entrench in a good amount of, of team projects, which I've found to honestly be um, incredibly fulfilling because it really offered me the ability to practice the content that uh, that we're learning. And even despite having a very busy schedule, um, I've been working with the same students throughout the entire time of my program. So we've really gotten to know each other, each other's schedules, each other's kind of um, limitations. And we've really found a way to make it work and, and find the time to get that done. It's been pretty fulfilling. On, on the other hand, also the professors, even though it's an online program, completely approachable, available throughout the week, offering office hours where we could either really ask uh, in-depth questions about assignments or contents, or really kind of get into debates about various content to enhance our learning. So overall, it's been um, just a phenomenal experience. Yeah, have you been able to network or or build relationships with students either through those global immersions or group work or? Yeah, I, I, absolutely. It's one of the highlights of the of the program for me uh, has been the networking and really uh, I'm incredibly humbled to be in this classmate uh, in this class filled with uh, individuals that are leaders in industry that are disruptors that are entrepreneurs that are. Uh, just professionals like me trying to seek and improve our our skill set and many of them are now what i would expect to be lifelong friends potential business partners and for sure collaborators absolutely thank you and uh naz back to you uh speaking of you know networking how would you say the online program kind of replicates the networking career coaching um that are kind of the forefront of the you know, in-person experience. Yeah, no, that's a great question. I, I think oftentimes when when think when people are thinking about you know going back and doing education, specifically an MBA, you know, historically we've thought of an MBA as the foundation to building a network. So how does one do that in an online space? And 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 I would say that our program specifically, we have spent a lot of time really thinking about how we can intentionally do that. So to give you some example, um, we even on the front end before a student has ever even enrolled in the program. 
um, in fact, just the um, what, Monday night, we had a, a networking, an impromptu, uh, informal networking Zoom happy hour with our incoming students, just so that even before they've come to campus, that they can start putting faces to names and so that they can really understand who they will start to share this experience with. And so we start with informal networking on the front end. And then why we are still so um, adamant about uh, on campus in person orientation, even though it's just two days, is that that really gives students an opportunity to get to know their classmates. It lays a strong foundation of who you will share this experience with, team building, you understand kind of everybody's backgrounds, you, you get to experience being a Gator together. And that's something that will continue throughout the, the course of the program. And so some of the other things that we do, of course, around fall, right, we're a big football school. So we have a, a big annual tailgate, which we encourage all of our students to participate in. Last year, we had over 650 people RSVP and about 400 attend our annual tailgate around homecoming. We also are intentional about partnering with our Gator Clubs. And we'll say, hey, you know, I'm going to be in Chicago. Let me connect some of our current students in the Chicago area with other Gators or even with other graduates or current students in the program. Um, we, we oftentimes think about networking from a, a kind of face-to-face -face perspective, but I would say that a benefit, post-pandemic benefit, is that we were able to do a lot more with Zoom. And so, in fact, you know, I think about my very first Poets and Quants event, was in person in San Francisco and think of how far we've come today and being able to do these. And so that is something that we kind of replicate even in an online space. And I think our students who are choosing an online program are choosing that medium to communicate. And so there is a more deliberate level of communication that happens in an online space because those are in an online program. And they recognize that the only way to really make those strong connections is through forging that in an online space. And so, you know, in addition to kind of doing the, well, the homecoming networking events that we do, uh, we, all of our events such as like Excel training, um, a lot of our professional development speaker series, um, our career coaching, all of those things have been taken virtually as well. In fact, we have corporate recruiters that do corporate info sessions that we're doing via Zoom now because they don't maybe necessarily have the time to come to Gainesville, Florida. And so now we can leverage this, this you know, opportunity to execute on some personal professional development and career development opportunities through Zoom. So if anything, I would say that all of our um, ancillary on the side opportunities actually really, you know, we were able to, to embrace in kind of an online space more so than we ever had been able to. And so to go also back to the point about the career coaches, all of our students have access to a career coach. In fact, our online students, our online one year and our online two year students have their own separate um, career coach. And, and so all of our students have access to the same career curriculum. So it's a online course that they do. Um, so there's a first kind of part of the program about the first year, they meet their career coach at orientation, they do an online module or a series of modules. And then, you know, closer to graduation or you know, at certain level of completion of their coursework, then they can set up one-on-ones with their career coaches. And I would say that of our online population, it's usually broken into a third looking for new opportunities, a third looking for career growth within career growth within their organizations. And then the other third, really just kind of wanting that MBA to grow personally, but also want to have it if and whenever the opportunity arises. And so I would actually, for those who are also on the call, it's important to have a program that offers strong career uh, opportunities. It's important to find a program that offers, you know, professional development, but also think about who you will share that network with. And Izzy, you know, is a great testament to the fact that she was, you know, she's in the program, She's networking with her peers. She's gone on a global immersion experience. I don't want to steal her thunder, but but the amount of networking that you actually do with your classmates um, and building those future opportunities is huge. Absolutely. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, you know, speaking of how Zoom after the pandemic really kind of changed the way we we kind of interact with each other. How else do you see technology and innovation kind of changing the business landscape? and how an online program can is like able to adapt to prepare the next generation of business leaders. 
So I'll just say that, you know, um, from at least my perspective, I think that, you know, as more people become comfortable um, with communicating in different modalities, I think that that everybody, you know, is, is coming on board, right? So whether it's Zoom or Teams, you know, this notion of sharing documents and, and you know, I think that, that now we're kind of the pandemic forced us to all kind of be on that same tech page, if you will. Um, and so I think that that right now, as I'm looking at everything from what I'm doing from a recruiting perspective, um, that's only now just marrying what I would say our online students have been doing for years because they needed to. So things such as, you know, not just looking at, you know, sharing documents via email, right, attaching a document, but but what types of tools can they use to be better and, and tools that can not only help them with project management from the work standpoint, but really how can they use those same tools um, to be a successful student? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Izzy, uh, what impact would you say the program has had on your uh, current role and uh, maybe how you're thinking about your career in the future? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I'm one of those candidates who is coming into this MBA with the goal of learning how to be a better partner within my own organization to area to other disciplines, right? I'm in procurement, but I really wanted to be a better partner to, to fi finance or operations group or marketing group and, and, and so forth. And so this program has given me a higher confidence in terms of being able to communicate with those stakeholders because it's taught me the language of those disciplines and now I better understand those points of view. Um, the other thing is throughout the program, uh, I really took advantage of, as I was taking various courses to really seek out somebody within my own organization who is from that, from that area of expertise and really pick their brain and try to understand how the content I was learning was applied within my own organization. So as a result, I feel so much more connected to my company. I understand our strategy better. I understand why people do some of the things that they do and I, I'm able to anticipate their needs uh, tremendously better. But the other thing is I really feel um, prepared for what's coming in industry. There's a lot of changes, particularly artificial intelligence, for example. And a lot of the courses that uh, I, I took and some that I'm currently taking are specifically geared towards building skills to be able to tackle those challenges that are coming. I mean, what's what's I don't expect that my current position or the traditional role as it's described today would be the same 10 years from now. And, and so it's helping me anticipate so I can get ahead of some of those trends and changes. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, well, if you had to kind of <clears throat> narrow it down to, you know, the kind of three highlight experiences for you so far, what would you say? Yeah, so I, I mentioned one earlier, which was which was the networking. I can't emphasize enough how I, I was so surprised at um, just the diverse individuals that I've come across in this program, diverse in terms of just different disciplines and how they think and so forth. And they've really broadened my perspective. And so that, and that's been throughout the course, whether the courses, whether it's been um, part of the class or like orientation, like Nas mentioned earlier, um, one of the biggest highlights for me has been the opportunity to actually immerse myself in person within the program, starting with the orientation. I thought that was a fantastic experience. I was one of those individuals that prior to coming to orientation for the first time, I did participate in the happy hour uh, that Nas had described. And that was the first time that I realized that, wow, the university really has set up tools. This is going to work. <laughs> like You think in your mind, like, what does it mean to be an, in an online program? How is that going to work? And it just really instills confidence from the beginning. But just meeting people in the program that are going through the, that are about to entrench on the same journey as you is is amazing. It, it really helps because there are new parents in the program. There are people um, from a variety of just places within their career, whether they're just starting out and they're, they just freshly graduated and are looking to jump right into that graduate program or have been in industry for 20, 30 years and now want to do a change or, or something. Just experiencing and being amongst those people and understanding that you're not alone is so tremendous. So you kind of engage on this journey. Um, my, my top highlight though has been the global immersion experience. I'm so glad I did it. Went on a one week trip to Austria where a group of us really um, had the opportunity to really get to know the country better, the strengths and opportunities within that region, not only from 
a country or government perspective, but also from local businesses and nonprofits. We actually worked on a consulting project while we were there. So it was just so much fun. The program is really fun on top of all the knowledge that you're gaining. It's a really enjoyable experience. Oh, absolutely. Thank you for that. Um, well, Nas, how would you see the online MBA at uh, Warrington and maybe more generally kind of evolving over the next three to five years? Yeah. So I think that the biggest change that we're going to see is, you know, um, is really changing kind of as, as market demands are changing, as, as employers are looking for new skill sets in, in our students. Um, I think that that's something that we're constantly keeping a pulse on. And, and so beyond that, you know, we're also just constantly trying to figure out ways to better engage our students, you know, because we, we you know, we think, okay, well, we have a decent, I would say pretty good equation for engaging our students doesn't necessarily mean that that's going to continue to work. You know, what the student wanted, you know, 10 years ago is, is not what they want today and maybe not what they want in the future. And so as a program, um, you know, we have to be as agile as our students need to be in their workforces, right? Because we need to be able to offer them what makes most sense. So, so the big things on, on our kind of agenda is professional development. What certifications are our employers looking at, you know, what are things that we can be doing to make sure that our students are truly ready for those MBA related roles, if they're looking to either get in them, or if they want to have that increased confidence, and what does that mean, increased confidence um, within their current industries or their current organizations, because at the end of the day, you know, we recognize that not everybody's going to remember the law of supply and demand. I mean, hopefully they will, or the four P's of marketing. But, but at the end of the day, it's building future business leaders that are equipped to thinking analytically, to being able to, to, you know, take a problem and really dissect it and understand all of the key players that need to be in that conversation to lead to the best possible decision. So, so I think, you know, Izzy really talked about that confidence, you know, and, and she come, came from a non-business undergraduate degree. And so being able to, to kind of make that segue is huge. And so for us as a program, it's always thinking about what more can we offer to better prepare our students? Yeah, absolutely. Well, we have a little bit more time. Do you want to take a minute to kind of tell us just about how the um, students are able to kind of, uh, uh, you know, link into your alumni network and what kind of help they can receive from that? Yeah, so I, I will touch on that, but I also want to touch on some other great opportunities that our students can um, participate in, even as an online student, because I think that that it doesn't always, you know, work out where students can, can participate in every opportunity, but I think if I could shed a little bit more light, and it's inclusive of also diving into that alumni network, you know, so, so first and foremost, our alumni network, we have um, over half a million Gators globally, we have over 85,000 Warrington College of Business graduates, and over 12,000 U.S. FMBAs. And, and of course, every fall and spring, we graduate more. So that alumni network is only ever growing. Back when we started our MBA program and opened our doors and had our first graduating class in 1948, we had three individuals. Obviously, we continue to grow, right? And so, so over the course of, of the program, you know, as we've grown, what that really just meant is that our alumni as well. And, and so um, if a student is looking to make contact, you know, with, with a member of our alumni, uh, you know, whether it be our alumni association or one of their more localized MBA group, alumni groups, you know, the first and foremost, we say, you know, using LinkedIn is a great tool, but also leveraging kind of who you know in the program. And, and that's not just classmates. It's, you know, there isn't a day or a week that goes by that I'm not pinged by one of our alums to say, do you know somebody here? Or do you know, because at the end of the day, you know, it, we, we are, are a large program, but our staff is fairly small so that we have that ability to work hand in hand with each of, and every one of our students. And so oftentimes it's just kind of figuring out, making that ask so that we can make the appropriate um, connections. You know, I think that, that for the alumni network, using LinkedIn is a great way, but also, you know, utilizing the, the um, alumni network in your area. So our Gator Clubs, that's a great way to continue to connect. And then all of our students actually, when they enroll in the program, they join our a Salesforce community. In fact, they have two. So, so Izzy is a part of two. She's a part of the larger UFMBA Salesforce community and then specifically her cohort. So if she wants to send messages that are more relevant to like, wait, what lecture are we supposed to be watching? Wait, what class are we enrolled in? 
hold on. Do I have something to do, do today? Then she can ping her immediate cohort community. But of course, if she wants to say who in this area um, you know, works in procurement, she can also do a, a larger you know, kind of question out to the MBA community whereby everybody has access to. And so it's a great way to kind of use a smaller closed circuit, if you will, to, to kind of connect with other enrolled MBA students and of course then LinkedIn for the alums. Um, but beyond that, you know, other ways to connect beyond just the alumni, you know, and, and, and so we talked about the global immersion experiences. Um, these are where we spend one week touring about six to eight different companies. Um, every fall and spring, we choose different destinations. So this past fall, um, we I'm like, wait, what semester are we in? This past <laughs> spring. Spring, yeah. Uh, we took one group uh, and we... Where did we go? We went to Austria. Uh, we took another group. Yeah. So this is this is this is where I'm at in this part of the, the season, right? Uh, we <laughs> actually took another group to Oman. So we did a, a fully alumni um, created trip to Oman, and we spent a week there. In the fall, we took a group to Rome, and we took another group uh, to Panama. And so we're con and, and and I can release this now. It's public info. Uh, this upcoming fall, we're going to Greece, um, and then we're also going to Argentina. So we're super excited about that. So so students have ample time to think about what destination they would want to go to, to choose an international trip. And these international trips aren't just for our online students. All of our students, are, so you know, on Izzy's trip, she had full-time students, other online cohort students, week and professional students. So it's a great way to network. In addition to that, we are a part of a consortium uh, in Washington, DC. So our students can go to DC for a week and learn more about business policy or health admin policy. So they can do that in an immersive week style or they can come to Gainesville and take a one week elective course on campus. So if they were enamored with the swamp and they wanna come back, they have an opportunity to come back for one week and take, let's say an advanced relation, customer relation analysis course or a negotiations course of some sort. So, so there are opportunities as an online student, if you need to be entirely online, you can, or if you wanna find ways to either come to Gainesville, go abroad or, going, or go to Washington DC, you have those avenues as well. Yeah, very good. Well, why don't you close out just by telling us kind of briefly um, how students can learn more or a little bit about your admissions process. Yeah, so as I said earlier, we have three intakes a year, so fall, spring, and summer. Um, but throughout the year, even if we you know we aren't, if we're past an application deadline, um, keep in mind that my team and I are always happy to assist. Um, we run you know weekly information sessions that go into our program in a lot more detail. We do on-campus events such as open houses. We do free GMAT boot camps. Even though we're waiving the test uh, requirement, it's a great way to come. To Gainesville and experience the swamp before you enroll as a student, if you'd like. Um, we are also, my team and I are on the road. So in fact, this week I'm in South Florida, um, but you know, we have another team member that's in Atlanta, another one in DC. So we're kind of all over the place. So I encourage you to, to check out our website, you know, come meet us wherever is convenient for you. We'd love to, to chat with you and learn more about kind of what you want to do and how a UF MBA can fit into, into your own personal and professional journey. Um, and, and keep in mind that the application itself is fairly straightforward. There's only a $30 application fee and, and our application, you know, can be done in, in you know, as little as um, two, three hours. And so um, it's not a huge lift as he went through it. She survived it. Um, and typically within, I would say, four to six weeks, you can expect an admissions decision. Um, but the key things I, I tell everybody is that, you know, just stay in touch with, with me or my team member. My contact is available on our website. Please reach out. I'm happy to assist in any way I can. All right. And if you want coffee, come meet me for coffee somewhere. <laughs> Absolutely. Always. Um, well, thanks both for your time and your valuable insights. And for all the school seekers out there, thank you for watching. And remember that we have lots of other webinars like this and discussions with other top online MBA programs, which you can find on our YouTube channel. And until the next time, thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you.